Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at Chapter 7 of The Mythical Man Month by Fred Brooks, and the title's question of Why Did the Tower of Babel Fall is addressed in the first section. If you look at that project, what might you speculate went right and wrong? Things that went right are fairly obvious. There was a large workforce dedicated to it. There were lots of physical resources and focus devoted to it. The mission was apparent and the technology was more or less a known factor at that point. But the project failed long before it got to the highest point a building could theoretically reach because of a breakdown in communication. As a result of losing communication, organization was lost, and so by extension, the mission itself fell into disarray. The same could certainly be true in the case of large programming projects. In fact, no divine intervention is even needed for entropy to seep in any engineering team. With enough moving parts and systems being too large for any individual or set of individuals able to keep an eye on every bit of implementation, it follows that diverging visions will end up having consequences on each other. This can, of course, be mitigated to some extent with good communication, and there are a few avenues by which this is done. The first is informal. This would be things like walking by someone's desk for a chat, emails, Slack messages, and so on. The second is meetings, which is something done on a regular basis that gets all relevant people in a circle to pass along pertinent details. Lastly is a project workbook, and this is worth its own section. The project workbook is somewhat of a misnomer since it isn't a document, but what the author calls a structure imposed on the documents that a project will be producing anyways. You're probably familiar with the plethora of documents that are created by engineers, designers, and people on various business teams that talk about the why and how of a software project, what the impetus is, how we'll present the value of this product, when it will be done, and so on. Incidentally, I just started a project today that has necessary product information across at least six documents that I'm aware of, created by and commented on by at least a dozen people that I could identify by the change log. If there was a standard format for organizing these docs, as the workbook would enforce, then I could be assured that I'm not missing any information. It is unrealistic to expect that all the information for a project would necessarily be in one document, and if it was, it'd be a mighty big doc. But if it was at least agreed on that stakeholders would present their work in a standardized format, the dissemination of all relevant information would be much more straightforward. The book goes into pretty thorough detail about the process of printing and reprinting these books, which is a fascinating detail about the process of software development many years ago. So while the format is mercifully out of date, and we just use Google Docs now or something similar, the concept can still be adopted for modern usage via the document sharing tools of your company's choice. If there are X number of workers in a project, there will be X squared minus X divided by two possible lines of communication. The purpose of organizing is to minimize the amount of communication necessary to still accomplish meaningful increments of work. Depending on how teams are divvied up, they will typically be organized in a tree branch leaf structure. And to be effective as part of a tree, a team needs the following six things, a mission, a producer, a technical director or architect, a schedule, a division of labor, and interface dimensions among the parts. Many of these things come intuitively and naturally if you think about implementing them, but the difference between a producer and technical director is worth exploring in somewhat more detail. The chapter has an entertaining, albeit drawn out narrative, highlighting the relationship, but a more concise explanation will suffice here. The producer is the head of the team in the sense that this person establishes communication, the schedule, the division of labor, and moves resources and people around in such a way that the project's goals are met in a timely manner. Much of the producer's work 
is as an interface to the rest of the company and is thus largely concerned with external communication. His counterpart, the technical director, is almost insulated from having to interface with the rest of the org for the most part, but is in charge of communication to a large extent within the team. His other primary tasks are to make technical decisions for the team, unblock the other individual contributors, and to self-execute on projects with particularly complex requirements that are best suited to someone with that level of knowledge and expertise. That's all for this chapter. I hope you enjoyed it and found it thought-provoking, and I'll see you all in the next one.